Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is Chemistry Honors Organic Chemistry Functional Groups. Uh, we've been through alkanes, alkenes, alkynes. We've been through cyclic halocarbons, and now we're doing functional groups. So what is a functional group, you may be asking? A functional group is a specific substituent that basically tells us exactly what the compound's characteristics are going to look like. So as we go through these functional groups, uh, I want you to take a look at the functional groups, how we name them, and but and, and, and what they look like. But do they have hydrogen bonding attractions? Do they have dipole-dipole attractions? How will it change the characteristics of the molecule itself? So let's get to it. So the first functional group we have is a thing called a halide or a halogen substituent. What do I mean by a halide or a halogen? Well, we mean fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So if you take a look, this R represents all of the carbons and hydrogens and so on and so forth. Um, and then we have, sitting off one of these ends, we have a fluorine. So we would call that fluoro or chloro or bromo or iodo because of, of fluorine, chlorine, and bromine, and iodine. Okay, so uh, what, what do I mean by this? Let's, let me give you an example. Let's say we have CH3, CH2, CH, and then coming off the CH, uh, CH2 we have here, we have a CL. So count how many carbons we have. We have one, we have two, we have three. What is three? Three is propane, isn't it? It's all single bonds here. But we have a chlorine substituent, and we have a halide. So we would call that chloropropane, chloropropane, or one chloropropane, because that chlorine is coming off of the first carbon. If that chlorine was coming off of the second carbon, you would call that two chloropropane, and so on and so forth. And so th that's an easy way to name it is chloropropane, chloropropane right there. Now. All of these are just dipole-dipole attractions. There is just a there's something different coming off the end here, and so the and we just name it with the fluoro, fluoro the chloro, the bromo, or the iodo, uh, iodo, and so that is the halogens. There are the halides, what we call it. And then we have alcohols. Now I want you to see, alcohol is. Well, it's not the solution. But in organic chemistry, sometimes it is the solution. And so alcohol, you can see, is OH. OH. Now, this is not a base. Not a base. A lot of my students think, oh, it's got OH. It's got OH minus. It's a base. No, remember, that's when we have something like sodium hydroxide. That is a base. Why? Because sodium is positive, OH minus is negative and it's with a metal, a metal ion, a cation for the OH minus. This OH is not a base because it's attached to non-metals. It's covalently bonded, okay? So let's take a look at this. We have a bunch of carbons and hydrogens and this OH is right here and that's an alcohol. And so when we name it, when we name it, we're going to simply put um, OL on the end of it. OL on the end of it. Let me give you an example. Let's say we have something like this. Uh, CH3, CH2, OH. Okay, and remember that OH, what it really looks like in reality is it's an O, it's got two unshared pairs, it's, got, it's bent right there, and that OH. Now, we have two carbons. What is two carbons? Two carbons is F. All right, it's all single bonds, so it's ethane, and it's got an alcohol, so it's OL right there. Ethane all, ethanol. Okay, eth means two carbons, ane means single bonds, OL means it's got OH off the end of it. Ethanol, and ethanol is the the name for alcohol. Okay, we have you can see down here we have isopropyl alcohol. Okay, but what's propyl mean? What's propane mean? Is three carbons. One, two, three. The iso in isopropyl alcohol means the OH is coming off the second carbon here. Okay, and so we have H, we have H, we have H, we have H. We have H, we have H, we have H. Okay, and so we would call that, we would call that pro 
propane. Prop means three carbons. A means single bonds. To all. Propane to all. But it's just easier saying isopropyl alcohol. Iso kind of means that OH is coming off of that second carbon. Okay, and so that is an alcohol functional group. You can see OH. What does that mean? We have we have with OHs we have hydrogen bonding attractions. Hydrogen bonding attractions. And so make sure you understand that these have hydrogen bonding attractions. Okay. Let's go to the next one. The next one is what we call carboxylic acid. This is the only functional group that we're going to take a look at that has a pH below 7, a pH less than 7. Why? Because it's an acid. It's a carboxylic acid, and it's got Chiku. You've seen this before. You you know chiku. Chiku is otherwise known as vinegar. Vinegar, or CH3, COOH, chiku. Okay, we've done that before. We've we've drawn the Lewis dot structures of chiku, and so that is otherwise known as acetic acid. Acetic acid. Uh, there's there, there's some other names. We actually call that ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid. That's the the real name. F means two carbons. We have two carbons. Oic. Ain means single bonds. Oic acid is the naming for carboxylic acids. And so, what does it look like? What does that look like? We have a CH3. That's that's our R right there. And then we have C. Anytime you see COO, it looks like this. It's got a double bond with an oxygen right there with an OH and obviously this side is bent right here on the OH part and so you can see right here we have some London dispersion forces like everything has London dispersion forces we have some dipole to dipole right here dipole to dipole but then on the end here we have some hydrogen bonding attractions some hydrogen bonding attractions so uh, carboxylic acids will have hydrogen bonding attractions because of that OH on the end there. Okay, but they all look the same. So if you have something like pentanoic acid, if you have something like pentanoic acid, um, pentanoic acid, you know pent means five carbons. We got CH3, you got CH2, you got CH2, you got CH2, and then it's got C double bond O. O H, okay, C O O H, and that is pentanoic acid right there. And so let's take a look at the next functional group, which is called an aldehyde. An aldehyde looks exactly like a carboxylic acid, except for that O is hiding. That extra O is hiding. Just a way to remember it. And you can see. Uh, let's take a look at, at something like this uh, for an aldehyde. Um, F, let's take a look at eth and all. Okay, eth, sorry, eth and all would, would be an as, an, an as, or sorry, an alcohol. So eth and all, A L. So we have eth is two carbons. So we have CH3, C, and ane means single bonds. Al is, means in aldehyde, in aldehyde. And what does it look like? It looks like C double bond O with an H right there. C double bond O with an H. The most famous aldehyde is formaldehyde, or what we would call um, methane al. Methane al. But we just call it formaldehyde because it is very, 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 very um, common. And so you can see formaldehyde is right here, and it's got that two unshared pairs on the oxygen right there. Formaldehyde, very, very uh, common. You can see this, obviously, is ca casual dehyde. Um, so this is formaldehyde, and then the other one is ca casual dehyde. Okay? So that's an aldehyde. Let's take a look at amines and amides. So amines, you know, from amino acids. So, uh, amino acids, okay? Amino acids have this amine group coming off of it. And so, if you uh, would have um, pro, um, so amines, pro.
propenamine. Propenamine. Prop means three carbons. CH three, CH two, CH two, and means single bonds. Amine means we have an NH two group coming off of it, and if it has N's and H's, we know we have hydrogen bonding attractions. Hydrogen bonding attractions. Okay, something like an amide would have something like this: CH three CO. What does CO mean? It's got C double bond O right there with an NH two group coming off here. It's got some dipole-dipole attractions up here. Obviously, it's got some hydrogen bonding sitting on the N's and the H's right there, hydrogen bonding attractions. And so that is amines and amides. The main reason we learn these, obviously, is because of amino acids. Amino acids have the amine group and a carboxylic acid group on them, and that's what makes it an amino acid. Um, let's take a look at ketones. Ketones are, are kind of very, very interesting. Ketones have one group of carbons on one side, one group of carbons on the other side. That's why we label it R1 and R2. So we have, let's say, CH3CH2. Then we have CO. What does CO mean? Is C double bond O with a different group of carbons on the other side. And so that is called a ketone. A ketone. And so you can see right here, uh, this would actually, one, two, three, four carbons. There's many different ways to name these. You just have to recognize the ketone. And obviously, with the C double bond O, we have dipole to dipole attractions there for ketones. The next one is esters. Esters. You know ester by probably by the name of polyester. Polyester. Okay, very famous back in the 70s. You're mom or dad probably wore some polyester back in the day and so it's got one group of carbons on this side and then it's got C double bond O with an another O right here and then another group of carbons on the other side right there and so you can see with the COO obviously it's got double double forces all around the block double double tractions COO and all polyester means is that ester group was multiplied over and over and over and over again to become what we call polyester. It just multiplied n times, hundreds and hundreds of times, and it created this amazingly beautiful fabric right here. Okay, And uh, the last of our functional groups is in ether, in ether. And so an ether is where we have some carbons and hydrogens on one side. We have an O slapped right in the middle. It's kind of like a bridge. And then we got a bunch of different carbons on the other side. Obviously, it's just dipole-dipole attractions. No hydrogen bonding attractions right here for ether groups, for ether groups. So we can identify all kinds of our functional groups right here. You can see here we have a CO sitting right in the middle of everything. We call that a key, we call that a ketone, don't we? A ketone. We have an NH2 group right here. An NH2 group. We call that an amine. We have a C double bond O group right here. There's another ketone. Okay, right in the middle of everything. We have a COH group on the end. We call that an, that an aldehyde, an aldehyde. We have an O right in the middle, right in the middle. If you remember, we called that an ether. That was that last one we just did, an ether. And then we have right here, we have another COH group right here. That's another aldehyde, aldehyde. That's the same exact problem as this one right here. Um, if there was a COOH, it would be a carboxylic acid. And so you have to be able to recognize all the different um, functional groups. If we come back to the very beginning, we have hal halogens or halide functional groups. We have an alcohol with an OH, with an OH. We have a carboxylic acid with a COOH, a C double, double bond OOH. We have an aldehyde with just a C double bond OH, COH. 
We have an amine with an NH2, an amide with a C double bond O, NH2. We have a ketone with a C double bond O. We have an ester with a COO right in the middle, C double bond OO. We have an ether with just an O as a bridge in the middle for that. And that is all of our functional groups for organic chemistry that you got to know. So make sure you write them down. Make sure you take a look and kick it, kick it, kick it on the flip side. Yo, yo. Have a good day. Bye.